Good morning, these are the top stories, recounts are happening today in two New Brunswick writings amid allegations of voting irregularities the recounts affect the St. John Harbor riding, which the Liberals won by a 10-vote margin, and in Memram Cook Tantramar, which the Greens took by fewer than 25 votes. A lawyer for the PC candidate in the St. John riding has alleged that about 40 electors voted twice. If recounts don't change the outcome there, the lawyer will file an application to throw out the St. John result. Even a shift of a single seat could have major implications for control of the province, with the Tories currently sitting at 22 seats, just one more than the Liberals. Both the Tories and Liberals have been working to gain support from third parties. The Greens and the People's Alliance have three seats each. This is the Daily Morning Update newsletter. If you're reading this on the web, or it was forwarded to you from someone else, you can sign up for Morning Update and all Globe newsletters here. Six employees have filed human rights complaints against the University of British Columbia. In complaints that involve top UBC administrators, the employees are alleging discrimination against pregnant and disabled workers. Among the staff named in the complaints are the school's chief information officer and the dean of education. This is clearly a systemic pattern on behalf of the university's leadership, said Joey Hansen, the executive director of the union that represents the employees. The union also alleges that UBC took punitive actions to retaliate when it discovered the complaints. UBC is denying the allegations. Details of cases are not made public by the tribunal until three months before a hearing is scheduled. The LNG Canada project will mean new measures to meet BC climate targets. BC Premier John Horgan said the go-ahead given for the $40 billion liquefied natural gas project will force the province to find new reductions on greenhouse gas emissions, for subscribers. The exact climate footprint of the LNG Canada terminal in Kitimat remains in doubt as Horgan's government questions the estimates put forward by Royal Dutch Shell. The province is set to release a new climate action plan later this fall, but officials said that proposal will fall short of 2030 targets. New measures will be revealed in the spring. Canada still plans to pursue closer trade ties with China despite a clause in the USMCA deal Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Ottawa will look to engage, deepen and improve its trading relationship with China even though a clause in the tentative Canada-US-Mexico trade deal places restrictions around bilateral agreements with a non-market economy. For subscribers, experts say the provision is designed to prevent China from getting around U.S. sanctions by making deals with Canada or Mexico and then shipping goods through those countries into the U.S. market. While critics say the clause could give the U.S. a say or even veto over a Canada-China deal, the federal government is playing down those concerns. The 2018-19 NHL season begins today. Here's what to know before puck drop no Canadian team has won the Stanley Cup in 25 years. Could this be the season it finally happens again, with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Winnipeg Jets both strong contenders? Go here for a primer on the season, with breakdowns for every NHL franchise. In case you missed IT Francois Legault says he will use the notwithstanding clause to ban civil servants from wearing religious symbols Quebec's premier designate says his government plans to prevent public servants, including teachers, police officers and judges, from wearing religious garments while performing public functions. Among those who could be affected are people who wear the Muslim hijab or Jewish kippah. Legault's coalition Avenir Quebec Party has already put forward plans to cut immigration quotas and impose values tests on new arrivals. The vow to invoke the rarely used notwithstanding clause comes just weeks after Ontario Premier Doug Ford vowed to use the power to pass legislation on Toronto's council size. Ford didn't resort to this after an appeal court stayed a lower court ruling. Morning markets markets mix the euro bounced off six week lows on Wednesday. European shares rose and Italian bonds rallied as some of the worries that have rippled across markets this week were soothed by signs Rome was amenable to cutting budget deficits and debt in coming years. Tokyo's Nikkei lost 0.7%, and Hong Kong's Hang Seng 0.1%, while the Shanghai Composite was closed. In Europe, London's FTSE 100 and the Paris CAC 40 were up by between 0.1 and 0.2% by about 6.20 a.m. ET, 
with Germany stacks down 0.4%. New York futures were up. The Canadian dollar was at just about 78 US cents. What everyone's talking about? Stop the hysteria over measles outbreaks without measles vaccine, we would expect about 350,000 cases in Canada each year. Instead, we see a few dozen reported cases. At current rates, Canada can expect to see a death from acute measles about once every hundred years or so. The borderline hysteria, fueled by the media and public health, that greets a few cases is unwarranted. Anti-vaccine sentiments are real but their numbers are small and not growing. In Ontario, for example, all exemptions, both medical and philosophical, under the school immunization law have hovered around 2% since legislation was introduced 35 years ago, a small and stable number. Our current levels of immunization are more than adequate to achieve herd immunity, which means that measles cannot spread in a sustained way. This protects everyone, even those who have not been immunized. Neil Rao, infectious diseases specialist, and Richard Shibas, former Ontario chief medical officer, the Giller Prize shortlist is remarkable, diverse and daring Michael Ondaatje published a new novel this year. Had this happened in the 90s, we would have assumed that such an icon would necessarily be chosen for all the major shortlists. Just the way a group of seven pictures used to have to be on our phone book covers, instead, this Giller shortlist includes a work that is experimental in form, Sheila Hedy's essay Memoir Motherhood, a work of speculative fiction, a notion of minutes by Theo Lim, a work of historical fiction, Esaia Dugin's Washington Black, also nominated for the Man Booker Prize. A popular Quebec novel in translation, Eric Dupont's Songs for the Cold of Heart, and a light and wry piece of social comedy, Patrick DeWitt's French Exit. Every single one of these books looks entertaining and compelling, not one seems chosen because it is good for you. And yet it reflects different kinds of diversity because Canadian literature itself does. Russell Smith Pierre Trudeau would have enjoyed Monday's Quebec election. Not, mind you, the particulars of the result, the province's Liberal Party, an ally in the Federalist foxhole, took a historic beating, scoring less than 30% of the vote for the first time since Confederation. Nor would the former Prime Minister have been thrilled by the victorious coalition Avenir Quebec and its leader, François Legault, with their fear-mongering about immigration. But what he would have appreciated is the fact that, for the first time in two generations, separation wasn't on the table during the election campaign. Globe Editorial Living Better Travel Ideas, Wine Tourism in Mexico, Food Tourism in Chicago Valle de Guadalupe just a few hours south of the San Diego-Tijuana border, has seen its wine industry burst open over the past few years. It now has more than 150 wineries covering 7,000 acres, virtually the entirety of Mexico's wine production. To boot, the spike in wine tourism has given way to an innovative culinary scene. From the Chicago hot dog to Chicago mixed popcorn and, of course, Chicago deep dish pizza, there's no shortage of original, quick bite cuisine in the Windy City. Try Garrett's for the kernels, La Briola's for the pies, and most any outdoor stand for a wiener. Moment in time O.J. Simpson is acquitted October 3, 1995, in the matter of Orenthal James Simpson, the prosecution made one serious mistake after another. The actor and former football star stood accused of murdering his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ronald Goldman in the affluent Los Angeles neighborhood of Branchwood. The first mistake was moving the trial to a downtown district. The prosecutors argued that it would more easily accommodate the crush of media. But legal experts quietly speculated that the optics of a suburban, predominantly white jury convicting a successful black man would not be good. The 133 days of televised proceedings would see several other egregious errors by lead prosecutor Marcia Clark and her team. But without a doubt the worst was the decision to ask O.J. Simpson to try on gloves covered in the victim's blood. In the performance of his life, Simpson tried to pull the gloves over his arthritic hands, but to no avail. Defense lawyer Johnny Cochran would later tell the jury, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. And they did. Simpson was found not guilty. And no one else has ever been arrested or charged in connection with the murders. 
Massimo Comandici If you'd like to receive this newsletter by email every weekday morning, go here to sign up. If you have any feedback, send us a note.